So um, yeah, let us look at uh, one of the questions in paper six. Okay, I will just say that this question in paper six carries the most mark actually. Yeah, it carries seven mark. Therefore, okay, um, today, so this moment here, I'm going to discuss this and uh, I'm going to give you some format. Yeah, can I? So how you, you can score that seven mark. But before that, let us go through this question first and see whether you have some ideas in you on how to do your paper six. So a student is investigating whether the resistance of a wire depends on the material from which the wire is made. Resistance R is given by the equation R equals B over I. You know this is Ohm's law. You have learned in uh, physics, right? Okay. And the following apparatus is available to the student. They are very kind because they give you a list of apparatus. Yeah. Those are emitter. Okay. Are you familiar with the symbol of emitter? The voltmeter. The micrometer screw gauge, okay, for your information, you are not supposed to draw your micrometer screw gauge, yeah? And the power supply, zero to three volt, that means this is a very small power supply, small voltage, yeah? Variable resistor, variable resistor is like your real stat, you can adjust, yeah, your resistance. Yeah, and the switch you can connect and you can disconnect the circuit. And the connecting LEDs is like your connecting wires. Yeah, and your wires are made of different materials like copper, maybe iron, yeah, maybe steel, etc. Yeah, so they ask you to plan an experiment. So I'm going to highlight. So um, you have to plan an experiment. Okay, hold on. Okay. Plan an experiment to investigate whether resistance of a wire depends on the material from which it is made. Yeah, so you should, can you see what are, okay, the uh, things that they, you require to put in? Draw a diagram. When they say a diagram, that means this is a labeled diagram. A diagram without labeling, you score zero mark. Yeah, draw a diagram of the circuit you would use to determine the resistance of each wire. So explain briefly how you would carry out the investigation, including your measurements that you would take. So because eventually you have to prove this. Resistance is given by R is equal to V over I. You know that when they give you a meter and a volt meter, you have to calculate your resistance. Yeah, different material or different wires of different materials, they have different numbers of free electrons. So definitely the resistance will be different as well. Yeah, based on the number of free electrons. If you have lesser free electrons, that means resistance will be higher. Yeah, and then uh, including the measurement you would take, state the key variables that you would control. You have to control. This is a variable, but in this, during this experiment, when you conduct this experiment, that variable must be constant throughout the whole experiment until the end of the experiment. Yeah. And draw a suitable table, tabulation of your table with column headings. Yeah. With column heading, meaning to say that you have to put, okay, uh, the uh, symbol together with their respective units. Yeah appropriate yeah so to show how you would display your readings you are not required to enter any readings in the table definitely you are not required to enter because you are not the one that conduct the experiment yeah so that is all they want and eventually they give you the seven marks yeah shall we discuss on the format first yeah can we, can i show you the format okay this is a whiteboard so i'm going to use a whiteboard to discuss the format yeah so first of all for paper six or paper five yeah designing question paper six designing question yeah this i call it as designing question because you are supposed to or planning experiment yeah planning question okay planning question so first of all you know that when you are conducting experiments to make your life easier i would suggest you to write down this first okay you must draw draw labeled diagram so draw a diagram so that you can have like a brief look yeah 
on the you have you may have like more ideas in writing your procedure or methods yeah and the second step yeah list out all your variables yeah so you have independent variables okay you have one independent variable you have one dependent variable even though you are not asked to write but we are supposed to make sure that our independent and dependent variable to be included in our methods yeah so dependent variable and of course the third one is the one that they ask you to write which is i'll use the other pen okay um, we don't call it control variable. You, so never write control variable. You know why? Because when you write control variable, you variable is something that you can vary. Yeah, physical quantity that you can vary. So when you say control variable, you want to vary? So people will wonder, uh, are you varying that variable or are you controlling that variable to be constant? You get what I'm trying to say? So confusion is there. So try not to use control variable. That's wrong. Yeah. So instead of that okay we use this variable okay it could be more than one so i will suggest you to write more than one yeah variables to be kept constant yeah so variable to be kept constant it is actually a variable but during that experiment we make sure that it is constant yeah throughout the whole uh, experiment right for example okay i want to make sure that the temperature of the water is constant so i'm using my thermometer yeah and okay the heater just to heat it out to make sure that okay there is no drop in temperature there's no decrement in the temperature if there is a little bit of decrement in the temperature so i will turn on my heater for you for a while so that the temperature is going back to the previous temperature you get what I'm trying to say? So that is variable, okay, to be kept constant. And then, okay, the third one, definitely your methods or your procedure methods, okay? So first step, okay, we normally, um, okay, we normally write, set up the apparatus as shown in diagram. So I will want you to uh, draw label diagram each and every time just in case i know this paper is quite short the duration of time is quite short just in case that you wasted so much time in other question and you do not have time to write down your methods yeah so at the examiner can the examiner can refer to your labor diagram to give you marks from there yeah so labor diagram will explain some of the methods so just in case you have no time to write down all the methods yeah so set out the apparatus as shown in the diagram so this is a b you might want to tell us okay what is your independent variable we know that your, this is your independent variable so what apparatus that you use to measure your independent variable yeah so apparatus okay or measuring instrument i would say easier so um okay measuring uh instrument Okay, for your independent variable. So let's say your independent variable is length, length of a wire, for example. So part B would be, uh, you submit a rule to measure the length of the wire. Ah, that is uh, what we want you to write, yeah? And maybe C, okay, um, measuring instrument, Okay, for your dependent variable, dependent variable, yeah? And method C, okay, I know that this is a variable to be kept constant, so how? Yeah, ask yourself, how to keep the variables constant? How are you supposed to keep that variable constant? Yeah, maybe you, you say that, okay, make sure uh, the variables to be kept constant is the diameter of uh, the wire, for example. So how to keep the variable constant? Use the same wire throughout the whole experiment. Yeah, so then, okay, E, 
Ah, repeat the experiment. Of course, you have to repeat many times so that your results are more reliable and you are supposed to plot graph, you remember? Yeah, so in the physics experiment, normally we will be asking the student to plot graph. So your procedure must include, okay, re repetition, yeah, to make sure our answers are more reliable and so that we can plot the graph to see the relationship because the students are supposed to investigate the relationship of this and that. So to see the valid re relationship, the validity of this relationship, we are supposed to plot the graph. Yeah, that's the easiest way. Yeah, repeat the experiment. Yeah, with maybe different length. Yeah, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, for, okay, maybe for six sets of readings. Yeah. Okay. Um, then after that, okay, after you have written down that, uh, you might want to, okay, let us go back to the question. What are we supposed to include that? So key variables we have already done. So explain briefly how you will carry out the investigation, including the measurements you would take. Can you see? Measurements that you will take focus on your independent variable and your dependent variable. Yeah, and after that, okay, draw a suitable table with a column heading. In this case, okay, they did not require you to write down any safety precautions or any additional details, yeah? But if you think that, Okay, these experiments will have a lot of safety precautions, a lot of things that you, you want to remind the future students before they conduct this experiment, you can also write that, no worries, yeah? So therefore, okay, this is only some suggestions because some of the past questions, they ask you to include the safety precautions and the additional details. Yeah, why not? Okay, we just change this question a little bit. I will put in the safety precautions and the additional details. Yeah, make it more than seven marks. How about that? Because this is just discussion. We are not, we are answering the past questions, but at the same time, because past year questions vary, yeah, designing question varies from one past year question to the other past year questions. So some past year question, they require you to put in safety precautions. Some are not like this. They do not require you to put in any safety precautions. Yeah, so therefore, okay, no worries. But for this question, we are going to put in extra. How about that? Yeah, so, um, okay. So this one is depending, yeah? Okay, uh, table, okay. Table, mm, I would say tabulation of table, yeah? Tab, tabulation of table. And sometimes they will ask you how you would, when you have to, when you tabulate your table, how do you come to a conclusion? Come to a conclusion, normally we don't look at the table, normally we plot a graph, yeah? Plot a graph to see the relationship, yeah? So if they give you something like this, let's say you are supposed to plot a graph of, okay, um, R is equal to V over I, right? So, or I'll just put v, I, v equal to I R. So plot a graph of V against I. If the graph start from origin and it is a straight line graph, then the relationship is valid. So depend on, actually depending on the equation that they suggested. Yeah, if they suggest this equation V equal to I R, okay, to test the validity of this equation, you can say that plot a graph of V against I. Yeah, if a graph uh, start from origin, it's a straight line graph starting from origin. Yeah, therefore, okay, V is directly proportional to I and the equation is valid. Yeah, and then number six, maybe we want to add some safety precaution. Safety precaution. Or, okay, additional details. Additional details, yeah. We can add for that question that we are, we are going to discuss later. So these are the format, yeah? So based on the questions, actually they have wrote down whatever they want, yeah? So we just follow, yeah? So see, now back to the question here. So 
student investigating whether resistance depend resistance of wire depends on the material from which it is made so resistance is suggested by that so you have to tell us that resistance is calculated from v over i so you have emitter you have voltmeter you have micrometer screw gauge yeah um what is the function of micrometer screw gauge here uh you are finding the resistance of wire material that it is made. And um, uh, I, I agree on whatever Cheyenne said now. So let me look at the question here. Uh, Newton said, do we need to write additional apparatus? We only write that when they told us that, okay, uh, include some additional apparatus that is not given here. Yeah, Nurin, when they ask us to include, yes, we have to include. And sometimes some past year question told us that, okay, write down all the apparatus needed for the experiment. So you have to write down all the apparatus, apparatus needed for the experiment. Mm, write down everything. Just follow the, their instruction. Instructions are quite clear. Yeah, so Jane say, can we say constant variable? No, never. Constant variable is very confusing. Is it a constant or it is something that you want to vary? We always say variables to be kept constant. Yeah, so now, okay, let us start with our diagram first, shall we? So how do my, okay, how am I supposed to draw my diagram? Okay, so here. Power supply is provided, so I'm going to use the power supply of, okay, 0 to 3 volt. I might want to use 2 volt maybe because this is the, we are supposed to measure the resistance of a wire. Can you see? And the wires that they are talking about here are the wires without insulator. Is this called bare wire? Yeah, do you know what is wire, B-A-R-E, bare wire? So this wire here, you can see here, here, uh, can you see that? Okay, this is a wire with insulator. So this white color thingy is insulator. So you just use your uh, cutter to cut open this insulator. You can see copper wire inside. Yeah, copper wire, okay, or any wires, lah, yeah, constant wire, yeah, the colors are different actually, yeah. So we can say that, uh, Brandon asked whether you can put that, yes, definitely, but you have to label that, Brandon. Or if I don't want to put this symbol here, I can also put this symbol, Brandon. I can also erase this and don't put that symbol and I just draw a box, yeah, here. I'll, I'll just draw. I'll just put a box here and I say this is DC power supply. Yeah. As long as you make sure that this is not AC power supply. Yeah. This is DC power supply. Yeah. AC power supply, they are going to tell you that is AC power supply. But DC power supply, normally they would just say power supply. Yeah. So I'll just put here DC power supply and then I connect to, okay, I have a switch. Yeah, this is a switch open first. And okay, one of the safe, safety precautions, if you can see, this is variable resistor just to prevent, okay, excess current from, from flowing through the circuit. Yeah, it is like your real stat, okay, but you have to draw an arrow, variable resistor. Yeah, the function of the variable resistor is as the safety precaution to prevent excess current from flowing through the circuit and burn the wire because the wire you can imagine, right? The diameter, when you are supposed to use a micrometer to measure the diameter, meaning to say that the wire is quite thin. Yeah, so therefore, uh, and I have a meter. Okay, so this one, I'll just draw it like this. Okay. Okay, a bit thicker as compared to, okay, then this is my current emitter, okay, emitter must be connected in series with the main circuit, yeah, connected in series, okay, if you, if you confuse, make sure that, okay, emitter connect to DC power supply, or you can put your emitter here, anywhere, yeah, so that's my advice. If you're confused, just put emitter beside your power supply. Easier. Yeah. And then, okay, I have my voltmeter. Voltmeter must be connected in parallel. Parallel, that means you have to extra join from the main circuit. 
yeah, create extra, yeah, path for the currents to flow. Yeah, that is what we call parallel. So after you have done drawing, I think I've done drawing after all. So label, so this is switch. This is, okay, variable resistor, variable resistor. This is, okay, connecting flats. Yeah, this is your voltmeter. And this is your ammeter, meter. And DC power supply, oh, I have already stated that. And then wires, yeah, wires. Okay, wire, that is all I need. Yeah, can you see I'm done with my circuit diagram here? So once I have done, I can write down my uh, variables here. So I will have my independent variables. Okay, only one and dependent, yeah? Variable. Can you tell me what am I supposed to put for independent variable? Okay, before that, let me differentiate between independent and dependent variable. Independent variable is something that you can vary easily. Yeah, something that you can change easily. And dependent variable is something that you cannot change easily. So look back at the question here. Plan an experiment to investigate whether the resistance of a wire depends on the material which it is made which one, okay, it is between these two, only these two. One will be independent variable and the other one will be dependent variable. Yeah, look at it, which is depending on which, yeah? Which is depending on which material from which it is made. That means you have uh, 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 numbers of wires, uh, numbers of wires, did you see that? Ah, Nurin, you are right. So, this will be my independent. Because wires are given. I have a numbers of wires. And the numbers of wires of different materials are actually given. Independent. And resistance of the wire is something that I cannot very easily. I have to depend on the wires. Yeah? Agree? It ha resistance has to depend on the reading of voltmeter and ammeter. So it's not easy for you to vary it. So therefore, resistance will be my dependent easier because I have to calculate it. Yeah. So therefore, my independent variable will be mm, wires of different, you just copy material. Yeah. And then dependent variable will be resistance of the wire, yeah? And then what about your uh, variables? Okay, we give more than one, shall we? Variables to be cap constant. So what are the variables that we are supposed to cap constant in this case here? Yeah, what are the physical quantities that you want to keep constant in this case here? So have a look at the diagram, yeah? Everything can be found from the diagram, yeah, actually. Hmm. So back to the knowledge that you have learned, back to the IGCSE syllabus that you have learned. Yes, Jane, yes, Brandon, very good. Cheyenne, very good, okay. We have more than one, very good, okay. Thanks for responding, that is very good. First of all, okay, of course, the length. You know the length of the wire will affect your resistance, therefore the length must be kept constant. Yeah, length of wire, and then your uh, diameter, very good, Brandon, diameter. Okay, hold on, I will just shift this chat box first. Diameter, oops. Diameter of the wire, diameter of wires, okay, all the wires, all their diameters. Um, and then, okay, the current that is passing through it, very good, because you are using the real step. Very good, current, okay. And then what else? Okay, voltage supply, because voltage supply is between zero to three volt. Yeah, you have to keep that constant. Very good, voltage of uh, maybe power supply. Yeah, voltage of the power supply, very intelligent. Okay, I have more than that. Enough, enough, enough. I've done with my variables to be kept constant. That is only worth you one mark, yeah? But it is good that you write more than one, okay? So now, 
we okay we are supposed to discuss about our methods here okay so first method set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram yeah so then oh before that okay before we set out don't you think that we are supposed to measure the diameter of the wires using micrometer first don't you think so so when we measure the diameter we make sure that all the wires okay have the same diameter then only we connect to the main circuit am i right so therefore okay measure the diameters of the wires using okay micrometer screw gauge yeah and then set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram okay then what happened is that switch is close am i right you have to close the switch first and then number four take the reading from the volt meter and ammeter can you see that uh okay after that Oh, Cheyenne has a question to ask. Do you have to list the materials of wires you're going to use? No, we are not supposed to list them. But if you, you want to list, you can say that first. Okay. Uh, connect copper wire to the circuit. Then after that, change the copper wire to the iron wire. Then after that, change to constant wire. So if you have a list of uh, different kinds of uh, wires, in your mind you can write it down but i'm not going to write it down here yeah so it is not wrong that you suggest yeah it is not wrong because as long as you you give us different types of the wires and that types of wires really exist then yeah definitely they, they're going to give you mark for that not wrong yeah so take the readings from the voltmeter and the emitter okay then uh r okay or resistance of the wire is calculated from equation r is equal to v over i what meter reading v and meter reading i so that i don't have to explain anymore because i say take the reading from the voltmeter it is understood that v represents the reading from the voltmeter which is measured in volt i don't have to talk about a unit because the unit is actually included in the voltmeter itself and meter reading is i represents i represents the emitter reading so even the unit i don't have to explain because the units are actually on the apparatus themselves yeah so resistance is calculated from the equation okay then repeat the experiment with different wires of different materials yeah uh Cheyenne asked isn't the resistance calculator included the variable resistor no it is not Cheyenne look at my voltmeter my voltmeter only connected to the wire it has nothing to do with the variable resistor unless my voltmeter is connected to the variable resistor then it has something to do with it that variable resistor acts as the safety precaution to prevent excess current from flowing through the circuit and burn that wire yeah the bare wire so we are done with our method actually yeah so yeah uh, do you have any question on the method thing yeah and then after that scroll up scroll up okay state the key that you will control definitely we have already stated earlier so draw a suitable table with column heading so so how are we supposed to draw yeah okay our table so our table should be what am i supposed to include in my table what do you think what am i supposed to include in my table please 
types of wire okay types of wires okay what else uh i'm supposed to include okay type of wire cheyenne say maybe you want to include the v reading the i reading then you do your calculation of r after that okay true okay maybe i should include my v reading my i reading ampere and my r which is equal to v over i slash the unit yeah this is how you are supposed to tabulate your table can you see column headings are the one that i wrote here types of wire types of wire we don't have any unit for types of wire and we have volt meter reading or you can write volt meter reading slash v and meter reading slash a ampere and resistance r slash ohm depends on you so we are not supposed to include in any values here so we are done with our table can you see that yeah so if Nurin asks if you put r right away is it wrong it's not wrong Nurin. it's not wrong as long as you put in types of wires and r because the students is actually investigating the types of wire different materials of wire and respond to r yeah so so let us put some extra thing here yeah so let us put in some safety precaution shall we precaution so what are the safety precaution that or additional detail safety precaution and additional detail yeah additional detail so what are the things that i'm supposed to write down whether it is a safety precaution or it is a uh, additional details you see first of all okay um jane asked is it every experiment must draw table no some of the experiment you just see from the relationship one is increasing the other one is decreased then okay you say that whether this relationship is valid so you just enough for you to tell us that okay um uh, if uh a is increasing r is decreasing then the relationship is valid yeah, sometimes tables are not needed. Some of them pass your question, they don't require a table. So it depends on the question. Look at the instruction, read every instruction. All the instructions are given quite clearly. So all you need to do is just follow the instruction to gain your seven marks. It is quite easy actually. If you want table, they will ask you to draw a table, tabulate the table. If you want graph, they will ask you to draw a graph. Or sometimes they will say, um, uh, explain how do we come to a conclusion. So come to a conclusion how uh, uh, to, you have to test the validity of the equation. Maybe plotting the graph is the best way. So plot a graph of R against blah, blah, blah. If the graph is a straight line graph, then the relationship is valid. Depends on the equation as well. Yeah. So I do not dare to say that each and every time you have to tabulate table. No, no such thing. Depends on the question yeah so yeah so go back to our diagram here if you want to add some safety precaution here okay the one that i'm going to highlight here variable resistor yeah so if you don't have enough time for example you do not have and they require you to write down the variable resistor right so you don't have enough time and what examiner do is that oh oh this person okay this person draw a variable resistor here okay so we are going to give that person this student one mark here even though you did not write it down in safety precaution because they will anyhow they will help you yeah anyhow i believe that they will help you yeah so if that is why i always say that drawing a labeled diagram is very very important even though this diagram worth only one mark but sometimes you, you know sometimes some of the questions are quite hard and you have limited time and you don't have enough time to write down your safety precaution your diagram will be the one that is helping you i forgot to put yeah for DC power supply, I forgot to tell you how many volt that I'm supposed to use. I'll just put um, two volt here or one one volt, yeah. Or in between zero, don't put zero volt. Definitely put one or two or three volt are accepted. Yeah, depends. Uh, in this case, I'll put two volt. Yeah, yeah. So anything else? Okay, variable resistor is one of the safety precautions. So I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to write that down. Yeah uh wow brandon thanks for reminding okay i will only connect to uh the uh, i'm going to charge it when there's a sign of low bat brandon thank you very much yeah so <laughs> you are quite observant yeah yeah so shall i ask whether i can scroll down a bit yeah is that fine true so give me more safety precaution we are going to discuss 
Yeah, down more, more. Yeah, give me more, more safety precaution, please. Safety precaution or additional details, please, more. Yeah, this is just a discussion, the one that we are writing down now, the safety precaution and the additional detail are not needed. That is why I put in green, yeah? So, because we are just discussed. So therefore we want to put more things here so that we have more things to discuss here. So anything else, suggest please, suggestion please. Yeah, safety precaution, you can say that um, the variable resistors are used, uh, is used to control the amount of current that is passing through the circuit. So you can say that first one, uh, variable resistor is used to prevent um, excess current, uh, or I'll just say is used to to uh, control the amount of current passing through the circuit. Okay, uh, and um, new reals will we get extra mark for that even if you write something that is not required. Yeah, if you write something that is not required, definitely you won't gain mark for that. Yeah, so that is why I put in green. Yeah, Brendan say make sure your hands are not wet. Mm, or you can say because you are dealing with wires without insulators. So you might want to say where gloves wear gloves when handling the wires rather than you say that make sure your hands are not wet who will wet our hand when we conduct electricity yeah you see <laughs> okay so wear okay wear gloves when handling wires okay and one more thing yeah you know that when we we are dealing with electricity yeah electricity question normally after each reading is taken we disconnect our switch we open our switch why because you know wires are full of resistance when you talk about resistance wires are easily to get heated so when the wires are heated up your connecting led I'm talking about your connecting LED, yeah? When you're connecting LED or connecting wires, uh, these are the ones that I focus on, yeah? So, yeah, the connecting LEDs, when they get overheated, your resistance value, your voltmeter readings and your emitter readings are not accurate. So that is why after each reading is taken, switch off or open the switch, yeah? So that the wires are not overheated, yeah? So that is how we keep our temperatures of the connecting LEDs constant. Yeah, you know, connecting LEDs, okay, the wires are quite thin. Yeah, so switch open after each reading is taken. Why? To prevent uh, connecting let to be overheated yeah and affect your resistance value yeah so those are the safety precautions or you can say okay take more readings for each wire and find the average yeah like for each wire okay for maybe a uh, constant wire so first of all i use constant wire first to vote switch close I take the reading on the emitter and voltmeter. Yeah, I have my one R, R value. I can calculate that. And then after that, I open the switch, wait for a few seconds, maybe two or three seconds. One, two, three. Close the switch and use the same wire and take the voltmeter and the emitter reading second time and then get your R, second R, and then find the average. Yeah, uh, your result will be more reliable then. Yeah, so repeat. Uh, repeat the experiment for the same wire and find the average. Yeah, find the average. 
yeah, to make sure that the result is more reliable. So yeah, I see you again, okay? So all the best, everybody.